All right, so this is a Chrome extension that I just created literally a few minutes ago. And as you can see, when I click on the extension icon, you will see this model box appear at the bottom right corner of the screen. And this is a unique behavior compared to other or most Chrome extensions out there. If you are using a Chrome extension like Honey or maybe LastPass or maybe you're using Dark Reader like this one, when you click on the extension, it will reveal this pop-up menu which is pretty much how you can interact with most Chrome extensions. But I think there is a slightly better way to do that. At least if you're using a model box, you have the opportunity to place it wherever you like. You can put it in the middle, you can put it at the top right corner, and you can add some nice animation effect when it appears and also when it disappears. And overall, when it comes to the user experience, I think I really like this a lot more compared to a normal uh, pop-up menu in most Chrome extensions out there. There. I actually have software on how you can create this model box on a Chrome extension on my previous video when I'm creating an audio element extension, but I didn't go into detail on how you can actually achieve something like this in an AI code editor. So on my previous video, I actually referenced this blog post for anyone that is interested to create a Chrome extension and using a model instead of a regular pop-up page. Uh, this is actually how I was able to create a Chrome extension with a modal overlay and at the time i was using a WinSurf code editor and i'm using the ai feature to basically create the extension for me and what i did was i was just copy and paste the code and that code is becoming the reference for the ai to replicate but of course at the end of the day i still don't know how this thing works and from my experience doing this over and over again the result is not always consistent so today i actually found a simple way to make AI create a Chrome extension that will reveal a modal overlay like the one that I have shown you earlier, like this one. And before we get into that, I think it is important for you to know that this video is not meant for professional developers. This is for people with little to no technical or coding knowledge that are interested to create their own Chrome extension with the help of AI. And maybe they want to create a Chrome extension for helping their workflow or maybe to share something unique in the Chrome web store. And we are going to achieve that by prompting. There will be no coding whatsoever. It's just prompting and then let the AI do the coding for us. And even though this video is for non-coders, I think developers could still learn something from this and maybe you can use the prompt and let the AI generate the code and then you can learn something from the code that it generated. With that being said, let's create a Chrome extension that will show a model instead of a pop-up menu. All right, now I'm in a WinServe code editor and and this is the program that I'm going to use to demonstrate on how you can create the uh, Chrome extension with a model overlay. But of course, you can use any other AI code editor. Maybe you can use something like Cursor. And also recently, VS Code offers GitHub Copilot for free. So I think you can definitely use that, although the agentic behavior is not as good as in WinServe or Cursor. Actually, WinServe is a lot better when it comes to the agentic behavior. But anyway, let's get started by opening a folder. I'm going to start... Uh, by clicking the file menu and click open folder. So here I'm going to create a new folder on the download directory. Uh, you can store the project wherever you like in your computer. I'm going to call this extension to the list modal and click folder. Let's click select folder and we have this. Click yes, I trust the authors. And now I'm going to open cascade to insert the prompt that will allow us to create the extension. All right, so this is where we can write the prompt and I'm not going to manually type the prompt because it is actually quite long and it will take quite some time to finish. Instead, I have prepared the prompt. So I'm going to just copy and paste the code into cascade. And this is the prompt. So I'm going to read the prompt and I'm going to explain why I'm using this prompt. The prompt is generate a Chrome extension called to do list using manifest version three and the following requirements. So manifest version three is very important. This is just the best practice is when creating a Chrome extension because Google actually will change the requirement in the future. So you want to make sure that your Chrome extension is going to be future-proof. Okay, the requirement number one is when the user clicks the extension icon, it should open a model overlay on the web page. So the way it works is essentially we are going to inject a model box element into a web page. So that's basically how this thing is going to work. But that box will only appear when you are clicking on the extension 
icon. So that was number one. Number two, the model box position is on the bottom right corner of the screen. This is something that you can change. You can ask AI to put the model box in the center on the top right corner or on the left side of the screen. It is totally up to you. This is something that can be customized. Okay, so on the requirement number three, the model box is styled using CSS and allows the user to close it by clicking a close or X button. This is something that you have seen before on my demo a few minutes ago. And then the requirement number four is the model style is independent from the website theme or styles. So this is actually very important because if you are injecting an element, an HTML element into the web page, it is going to follow the style of the web page itself. So you want to make sure that this extensions model box has its own style based on its own code that is not going to be affected by whatever style that the website has when the extension is being opened. And that's basically it. The requirements number five and six are just the features of the Chrome extension, which in this case, I'm trying to build a simple to-do list app. And you can obviously add more points if you want, depending on what is the Chrome extension that you are trying to build. But one thing to keep in mind here is that you want to use the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet or maybe GPT-40. I actually only tried this on Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and Cascade Base and so far cloud is giving me consistent result while cascade is not very consistent so you want to use something that will actually drive the result and when you're done make sure to select the right mode and you can hit this send button so right now we just need to wait until the ai in windsurf create all the necessary files for the chrome extension and yeah this is the benefit of using an ai code editor we don't have to do anything just create a prompt and the rest will be done by AI. Well, it is done. It's less than a minute and the extension is finished. I'm going to click the accept all button and after that, I'm going to test this Chrome extension on my browser. So let's open an extension menu. I forgot where it was. Oh, in this menu, manage extensions and click load unpack. So let's click downloads. That's where I store the Chrome extension. Click here and select folder. Okay, failed to load the extension. This is because there is no icon file while the in the manifest.json an icon file is required. So I'm going to modify the folder. I actually have to add an icon file into the folder. So this is the icon file. I'm going to just cut and then put it inside of the extension folder. And I have to modify the code a bit because it's requiring me multiple sizes, but I only have one picture or one icon. So I'm going to SAI to modify the manifest.json so it will only require one icon. The icon file is icon.png and let's hit enter. Okay, it is fixing the code and now it is only requiring one icon. I'm going to click accept all. And let's go back to the browser and click retry. Okay, now the icon is running. This is the icon. Okay, now I'm going to refresh the page and we should be able to test the Chrome extension. Now I'm going to click on the extension icon and there you go. Now we have a to-do list Chrome extension. This is a bit different than my previous demo that I have shown you earlier. Let's see if this thing actually works. So let's try something like buy some milk, enter. And let's try to refresh the page and hopefully we can get the same content as before. And there you go, the list is still there. So it is pretty much functional as a simple to-do list extension. So yeah, that's essentially how you can create a basic model overlay for a Chrome extension and replacing pop-up as a way to interact with the extension features. By the way, I'm going to put this prompt into the video description down below so you can check it out and you don't have to manually type this prompt into the AI code editor. If you want to see more tutorials about coding by prompting, then you should consider subscribing to this channel because I'm dedicating myself to create a video pretty much about how to create an app, website, or a Chrome extension with just prompting and without ever writing a single line of code. Speaking about Chrome extension, if you want to create a Chrome extension and then publish that into Chrome Web Store, then I actually have made a tutorial video about that right here. So if you're interested, check it out and I'll see you in that video.